Good evening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me for our second half of our special bedtime story, My Neighbor Totoro. This is Teacher Young from Your Children, and I have a shout out for our friend Isa. Isa, thank you so much for being a part of our program our first year. It was so fun having you split your time between us and your Spanish immersion preschool. We wish you the best. Take care and let's get started with our story. Totoro's Gift One rainy evening, Mei and Satsuki were waiting at home for Dad. Dad left his umbrella here, Satsuki noticed. She glanced at the clock. It was just about time for Dad to come home from his office at the university. Let's meet him at the bus stop. Dad's usual bus arrived at the bus stop, but Dad wasn't on it. I wonder what happened. Well, he'll be on the next one for sure, said Satsuki. It would be a while before the next bus came, but the girls decided to wait. May grew very tired of standing and waiting, and she started to fall asleep. I knew this would happen here. Satsuki knelt down to let May climb on her back. The two kept waiting at the deserted bus stop. Soon it was dark all around. Satsuki felt very lonely. Splash, splash, splash. The sound of footsteps grew nearer. Someone was standing next to Satsuki. She glanced out of the corner of her eye, and from below her umbrella, she could see a hairy foot with long claws. It was not a human foot. Satsuki fearfully raised her umbrella and took a look next to her. Could it be Totoro? Satsuki's heart was pounding as she took another look. It must be Totoro. I finally saw Totoro, thought Satsuki. Totoro was wearing a lotus leaf on his head and was soaking wet. Here, try this, she handed Totoro her father's umbrella. Totoro took the umbrella but didn't seem to know what to do with it. He had never seen an umbrella before. Hold it over your head like this, Satsuki showed Totoro how she was holding hers, and Totoro copied her. Splat, splat, splat. Raindrops spilled off the tall tree leaves onto Totoro's umbrella. Splat, pitter pat. What splendid sounds. Totoro must have thought the umbrella was a musical instrument. Gua ha ha ha. Gua ha ha ha! Totoro laughed with delight, jumping up and down. Thud! The ground trembled and rainwater poured down from trees all around. Splat! Splat! Pitter pat! Totoro couldn't have been happier. Gua! roared Totoro. May woke up. Just then, a light appeared in the darkness. It looked like the bus was finally coming. But no, this was no bus. It was a cat. Wait, it was a bus, a gigantic cat bus. The cat bus halted at the stop. After staring at Satsuki and Mei with its big eyes, it actually grinned. The two girls couldn't believe it. They were so surprised they couldn't speak. Totoro held something out. It was a small package wrapped in a bamboo leaf and tied up with a blade of dragon's whisker grass. May took it and watched Totoro climb onto the bus. The 12 legs of the cat bus sprang into motion and the cat bus took off at a stunning speed past the meadows, past the fields. In no time at all, it was out of sight. 
Totoro just took Dad's umbrella, said Satsuki, quietly as she stared in shock. Several days later, Mom got a letter from Satsuki. Dear Mom, we had such a weird, mysterious, spectacular day. My heart is still pounding. As soon as we got home, we opened the present. It was filled with acorns. We wanted to grow a beautiful forest with the acorns, so we planted them in your garden out back. But they just won't grow. May watches them all day, every day, waiting for them to sprout. It's starting to make her feel crabby. Here is a picture of May as a crab. Summer vacation is almost here. Please get well soon. Love, Satsuki. Don toko, don toko, don toko, toto. A mysterious sound woke Satsumi and May up one night. Don toko, don toko, don toko, toto. Three Totoros were in their yard. Totoro has Dad's umbrella, whispered May. They're walking right where we planted the acorns, replied Satsuki. The girls ran outside in their bare feet. Don toko, don toko, the Totoros were performing a ritual. Bending and stretching, bending and stretching in time with the sound. Satsuki and May joined in. Pwa! grunted Big Totoro, stretching up toward the sky as if to coax something out of the ground. He squatted down deep, then grunted, Pwa! again as he stretched up with all his might. And just as he grunted, Pwa! a whole bunch of sprouts popped out of the ground. Wow, Satsuki and May tried coaxing the plants up too. Amazingly, each time they stretched up, the plants grew bigger and bigger, becoming trees. Squat and stretch, squat and stretch. Don toko, don toko, grow, grow, grow. The tree shot up toward the sky sprouting branches and leaves until finally all the trees merged into one enormous tree. Then Big Totoro pulled out a top and spun it into the air. The large top twirled fast. Big Totoro hopped onto the top and grinned at, as if to say, come on. One by one, the smaller Totoros and Satsuki and May jumped onto Big Totoro. Woo! The top soared up with the wind into the sky. Do, 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 do. Gua! roared Big Totoro. What a splendid night! Satsuki and May roared with glee at the top of their lungs. May, we're the wind, laughed Satsuki. And indeed, Big Totoro's roar was just like the roar of the wind. At the top of the great camphor tree, Mei, Satsuki, and the three Totoros played ocarina flutes. The beautiful tones echoed through the quiet night. I hear a lot of owls tonight, remarked Dad back at home. The next morning, Satsuki and Mei leapt out of bed to see the garden. Hmm, where'd the tree go? Maybe it was all a dream, but on closer inspection, they noticed rows of small sprouts shining in the morning sun. Hooray, we did it, cried Satsuki. It wasn't a dream, shouted May. The girls laughed and jumped for joy. May gets lost. Summer vacation came. 
One night, excuse me, one day the girls went to help Granny pick corn, cucumbers, and tomatoes. It was the day before Mom was to come home, so they were gathering fresh vegetables for her to eat. She's getting a lot better, so the doctor said she could come home for two days. Satsuki and May looked so happy they could burst. Granny nodded and smiled. We'll feed her lots of my vegetables while she's here. My vegetables have soaked up plenty of sunshine, so they're good for you. I'll give her the corn I picked, declared May. Just then, Kanta came running over holding a telegram. It's from mom's hospital. Something must have happened to her, cried Satsuki, wondering. Calm down. First, we need to get in touch with your father, replied Granny. Satsuki and Kanta ran to find a telephone. May followed them, still clutching her ear of corn. Satsuki phoned her father at the university. Okay, I'll call the hospital right away, said Dad. Then I'll call you right back, okay? Just wait by the phone. Had something happened to Mom? Was she okay? Satsuki's heart was pounding as she waited for her father's call. When May finally caught up, Satsuki had already heard from Dad. She and Kanta were walking sadly back. Mom caught a cold, so she doesn't get to come home this weekend. May stopped walking. No fair, she shouted. It can't be helped, May. What if she came home early and it made her even worse? May wouldn't listen. It's not fair, May refused to understand. Satsuki's anger and disappointment flared up. You want her to die, May? Is that what you want? shouted Satsuki. You're such a baby. Just grow up. You're so mean, yelled May through her tears. <laughs> it was near sunset when Granny came over to help. Don't worry. Your father is going to stop by the hospital. The doctor said your mom just has a cold. She should be home next Saturday. Granny did her best to comfort Satsuki. This is how it was last time, said Satsuki. They said mom just had a little cold and she'd be home in a few days. Granny, what will we do if she dies? Satsuki couldn't hold back her tears anymore and they streamed down her face. Sweetheart, don't cry. It's all right. Granny tried to comfort Satsuki, but the tears wouldn't stop. From the house, May watched silently. Then, with a determined look on her face, she sh hugged the ear of corn close to her body and left. The sun had already begun to set when Satsuki and Granny noticed that May was missing. I yelled at her this morning. She wanted mom to come home. I bet she went to see mom at the hospital. I'll go look, said Satsuki. Granny was alarmed. Kanta, let everyone know. May has disappeared. We need all the help we can get. Satsuki ran down the road toward the hospital, shouting out, May, May. She asked everyone she met, but nobody remembered seeing her sister. May must have gotten lost on her way to the hospital. May, where are you? thought Satsuki. It's my fault. I shouldn't have said such mean things to you. Satsuki looked at the sun setting over the clouds and fought back tears. She had just started to walk back when Kanta caught up to her. Kanta, find her? Kanta shook his head. I'll ride my bike to the hospital and look for her. You should go back. They found a sandal in the pond. 
What? They don't know for sure if it's May's. Satsuki ran off before he could finish. May, May, don't die. Satsuki's feet were blistered and bleeding. She took off her sandals and kept running. She ran and ran until she reached the pond. A crowd of villagers had gathered there. Granny spotted Satsuki and hurried toward her with a small sandal in her hand. Here, is this May's? Granny's hand trembled. Satsuki looked carefully at the sandal. It's not hers, said Satsuki. She dropped to her knees in relief. Thank goodness. But still, where is May? What can I do to find her? A million thoughts crowded Satsuki's mind. Just then, she glanced up and saw the big camphor tree in the forest. That's right, she thought. Totoro. Gathering her last bit of strength, Satsuki started running again, this time toward the tunnel in the bushes. It was the tunnel May had used when she met Totoro. Satsuki called out, Please let me in to see Totoro. May's lost. Then she ran into the tunnel. Satsuki saw a red light at the end of the dark tunnel. She ran toward it, but suddenly her foot got caught on something and she tripped. She tumbled toward the light and landed on something soft. It was Totoro's big belly. Totoro, May's lost. Please help me. Totoro lifted Satsuki with his big hand. Gwah! With his roar, a strong breeze began to flow and his body floated up into the air. He carried Satsuki with him and they floated up to the top of the tree. Gwah! Totoro let out a huge roar and from far away, something responded. Mrah! It was the cat bus. In the fading light, they could see the cat bus racing toward them. Here and there, Satsuki could see the villagers searching for May. The cat bus sped right by them. Strangely enough, nobody seemed to notice. No one else can see it, can they? Satsuki wondered. She barely had time to be surprised before the cat bus clambered up the tree and came to a halt in front of them. Totoro grunted as if to say, get on. Satsuki nervously climbed aboard the cat bus. The floor and the chairs felt fluffy and soft like the fur of a cat. Satsuki read the sign. Destination, May? The cat bus went racing off. Through the rice fields and meadows, the cat bus sped along at an astonishing speed. It even ran on top of power lines. A long distance away, May sat sadly at the feet of some stone Ojisosama Japanese spirits that protect children. She was completely exhausted. From somewhere came her sister's voice calling, May! May stood up. Satsuki! Where are you? The tears had been holding back now streamed down her face. May, over here. May looked up in the direction of Satsuki's voice and was amazed. She was so surprised she even stopped crying. May stared as the cat bus took a flying leap off the power lines and landed right in front of her. May! Satsuki! The sisters hugged each other tightly. Were you trying to take your corn to mom at the hospital? Satsuki asked. May nodded. The sign on the cat bus had changed. It now read, Shichikoku.
Okuyama Hospital. You're going to take us to the hospital, gasped Setsuki. Thank you. She gave the cat bus a big hug and the cat bus purred. All aboard for the hospital, the cat bus took off, leaping over fields and mountains. In a moment, they had arrived. The cat bus landed in a tree right by the hospital. The girls could see their mother and father through the window. Mom looks okay, said Suki said with relief. Yeah, mommy and daddy are laughing, said May. We'd better head back. Everyone's worried about you. A gentle breeze wafted into the hospital room. Hmm? Mom looked around. I thought I just heard Satsuki and May's voices. Her eyes fell on an ear of corn resting on the windowsill. Dad picked it up, saying, Maybe you did. Look at this. The cat bus swayed gently as it carried Satsuki and May home. Thank you very much, said Satsuki. Bye-bye, see you again, called out May. The cat bus grinned and disappeared into the night sky. Down the road, Granny and Kanta were walking home. May ran toward them. Granny! Thank goodness. Thank goodness, we were so worried. Granny's eyes filled with tears as she hugged May. Thank you, Kanta, said Satsuki. Kanta laughed, looking embarrassed. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Up above, the Totoros blew their ocarinas. The soft tones echoed through the beautiful starlit sky. The end. Children, if you're still awake, I hope you have sweet, sweet dreams tonight. Get ready to have a lot of energy for the next day because it's back to school time. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to do this again sometime. To all of you, good night.